everybody and welcome to Santa Croce. We are in this amazing historic. Now, this amazing structure is known especially for its Dotto frescoes, which have survived the Middle Ages. Now, I want you to take a look around at this church and right now it's whitewashed, but in the Middle Ages they had a horror of emptiness and so all of these surfaces would have been covered in brightly colored frescoes depicting various scenes from the Old and New Testament. So just try to apply that to your imagination and we'll soon see some of the remnants of the frescoes so that you can maybe imagine it better. So let's go on. Let's go. Let's go. So here we have one of the few um, grave markers that's been left in the floor. So in the Middle Ages, people, prominent people were buried here in the floors of the churches. And apparently, as far as I've been told, it was Napoleon who said that it's bad to have dead bodies in the floors of your churches. So he actually ordered them all to be removed and uh, their bones to be placed in ossuaries or to be reinterred somewhere else. So yeah, but there's a couple of remnants here still of the medieval effigies of the dead who once laid to rest here. So as usual, dear viewer, I always say to look up and Italian churches are no exception because the medieval style of decorating and painting those beautiful wooden ceilings is just absolutely lovely. And especially because they've made the effort to preserve this and repaint it in the original medieval fashion. So you should look at it. Not to mention the beautiful sunlight streaming down. So here is an example of some of the sort of frescoing, the paint wall painting that would have been here, if not exactly fresco, because I'm not certain it was painted into uh, fresh wet plaster, but wall painting in any case. Um, coat of arms, and in fact that says the year, <laughs> um, yeah, MD is 1575. That was painted in 1575. Sorry, the date is, <laughs> whoever wrote the caption was not a professional writer. <laughs> they sort of crammed it in oddly. So some of you may know that Florence is the birthplace and the true home of Dante Alighieri, who wrote the Commedia, right? but unfortunately he was exiled from the city uh, for some opinions he had about the ruling party and also some conflict he had with the Pope. So he died in Ravenna. He's actually interred in Ravenna, but several centuries later, the Florentines felt sort of badly about that. And so they built him a tomb here and we'll be seeing that in a moment. Um, no, yeah, that's Galileo's tomb. Let's go over to Dante's first. So this subtle piece of 19th century uh, mm, sculpture <laughs> is the very modest tomb that they built for, for Dante, very, very much post facto of his death. Yeah. So he is not here, his body is not here at all. There is a much more modest tomb in Ravenna where his bones lie. Did you see that? Yes, we did. We did see that in Ravenna. That's why we know he's not This ain't he. But, you know, it makes some people feel better about themselves, I guess. And then over here we have the tomb. He's 13th, 14th century. Yeah. 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 Ye
trades were making trades with the Arabs. With the Arabs. Yeah. It's such beautiful work. When you consider what they were doing in Northern Europe at this time, it's just so much more sophisticated. Yeah, so here in Santa Croce, the remnants of the medieval wall paintings are kind of in all the corners. You can also see up here, literally in this corner. John the Baptist in his hair shirt in his full, long, you know, late 13th, early 14th century style hair shirt. <laughs> As they had. But yeah, it's a... Uh... Yeah, so the, this, the inscription on Galileo's tomb claims that he's resting there and resting well. Welcome, dear viewer. We're in Santa Croce. Do let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, we can continue our walking tour around this amazing structure. And actually, we're going to give you a view from the backside towards the altar and the choir, which is, of course, an amazing, amazing stained glass. It did, in fact, survive from the Middle Ages. Not all of it, unfortunately. Uh, Florence was bombed during World War II by Germans and the Allies, so kind of got a two-for-one deal in that regard, but thankfully it wasn't level the way much of Germany was. Yes, so here we have some more examples of some of the medieval uh, effigies and, and possibly Renaissance um, effigies that used to basically dot the entire floor. Yeah. Yes. Oh, do I have to take off my... Oh, okay. Va bene, grazie. Okay. <laughs> okay, apparently hats are not allowed on gentlemen, but ladies may wear hats. That's an interesting double standard. Anyway, um, for those who are just joining us, I will repeat that this entire floor used to be filled with the bodies of the deceased. Um, Napoleon decided it was um, insalubrious for there to be dead bodies in the floor of your church, and he actually ordered them to be removed, apparently. Uh, but there are still at least some effigies left in the floor. Yeah. Perhaps of some of the more uh, famous uh, contributing members of Florentine society. Rondal, though? Original? I'm, I think it is medieval, yes. Rondal painting. Look up. Remember, always look up, dear viewer. Um, you can just see the layers of history and architecture. Of course, I sort of would like to get up on that, that, that balustrade that stretches around the entire church. On the other hand, it looks terrifying. Yeah, terrifying. Mm, I think we should have recharged it. Moving onward. So take a look at the thing. Really, us art historians and lovers of beauty, the Giotto chapels. Well, and I mean, I guess if you like medieval sculpture, <laughs> Italian Gothic sculpture specifically, um, you can really appreciate this pulpit from which sermons used to be preached. Got four viewers now. Oh, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to Santa Croce. We're just looking at the sort of Gothic early Renaissance pulpit of Santa Croce before heading to the Giotto chapels where some of Giotto's most famous masterpieces can still be found. Thank you. 
Now this, this chapel gives you an idea, or this choir gives you an idea of how the whole church used to look. All these walls that are now bare were once bedecked in Welming style. Welcome to joining us. We are now in Chan about to use more clothes at some of course that amazing altarpiece just splendid mostly history and craftsmanship and skill needed to create these medieval pieces Okay. Oh, the crib. Oh, I wish they would just ask a native speaker about their translations. The eighth scenario of the crib, what they mean is the nativity scene. <laughs> but in Italian, the word for nativity is crib. <laughs> La crèche in French, <laughs> but we call it the nativity. <laughs> but apparently, uh, here they've been doing nativity scenes since the year 1223, apparently. 800 years. Of mm, yep. Now, of course, the frescoes in here are not medieval. Those are absolutely not. Uh, some of them may have been restored, but the main ones are not. Back up to five. Yay. I'm, I'm going to get a better view of these real quick. Okay. Yeah, just stunning. You know, at this time in mainland Europe, people were still thinking in two dimensions when it came to their paintings, but here we're already getting perspective and depth. So actually, on the inside of this chapel, yeah, you can see some of the medieval wall painting that has not been restored. So that should give you an appreciation for the contrast between the restored panels and pieces and the sort of damage, I mean, water damage, damage of fire or for the centuries. And then when you compare that to the chapel next to it, the confession, the confession chapel, you can see more of Dotto's work over there. Yeah, man. Glasses. So we're going to try to zoom in. We're going to try to zoom in, so I'm sorry if that makes you all a little queasy. I apologize for the sudden jump, everyone. Yeah. Moving onward. to zoom out or it's going to make everyone super queasy. Okay. Yeah, there we go. It's a little odd to walk on the faces of dead people, but on the other hand, they did put the panels in the floor. So... <laughs> Beautiful scenes. 
So they're now slowly, bit by bit, restoring all of these chapels. This is apparently the Bardi family. This was their chapel. And then on this side, you can actually see uh, Salome's dance as she dances for Herod. No, can't see it. I'm moving around. Mm -hmm. Bottom panel. Yeah. There's the musician, the fiddler to the left, and then off to the right you see Salome dancing. And Herod is Herod is behind the table. Some of the original medieval stained glass windows there. Again, it's remarkable that it survived. Florence has not only been the recipient of Allied and German bombing. <laughs> It's also been the target of seriously catastrophic floods that we will see the damage of shortly, I think, if it's still there. Hey, excellent. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching while you could. So this is the Capella Castellani. This is the Castellani's family chapel. And they also were the ones who owned the palazzo in which the Museo di Galileo is now located here in Florence. Uh, so you can tell by the size of the chapel that they were not poor or powerless <laughs> in the 14th century. Um, yeah. It is really just... You know, and then the Protestants come along and say, this is idolatry, what nonsense. This is, if anything, it's divinely inspired beauty. Call it anything else is just Philistine at best and asshole. Uh, we're down to one viewer. Mm. Now, for those of you who might like sorts of frescoes and artwork as sources for medieval clothing that comes with its dangers. Thomas is on. Oh, hello, Thomas. So, ciao. Oh, it's the, oh, there, David Lehman. Those of you who might like to use these, this sort of artwork as sources for reproduction medieval clothing, the, that's dangerous because these paintings were intended to signify to the viewer that that they were not depicting people who lived in this time and place. So there are details that indicate to a contemporary viewer that these were biblical people, people who existed centuries before, I mean, millennia, in fact. And so you can't really take these at face value as being what people actually wore. So you combine art with a study of documentary evidence and other sources and ideally if you can find it contemporary portraiture and contemporary sculptures of actual people who lived in the time and then you can start to really see the little details that indicate biblical versus real just I love these little details especially the yeah, look at that beautiful so wine decanter. Something. Yeah. With the water decanter next to it. Yep, the water and wine. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, medieval people did not drink undiluted wine. They weren't. Drank most of the time. But yeah, if you can corroborate any of this imagery with actual archaeological finds or descriptions and contemporary sources, then you can use it. But otherwise, caution is advised. In the meanwhile, just admire it for the beauty that it is. Gosh, look at that stained glass. Hmm. Uh, let me up again. Complessary. Compiat. I can't oh, put on my, oh, yeah. my glasses on. 
Il piacere è il mio, Tommaso. Ok, so... <laughs> um, so, yes, the, look at the stained glass. I mean, especially with the light streaming in through it. It can... Even, even, even people who don't believe in a or maybe can be inspired to believe in some sort of divinity when you have such beauty before you. Yeah, the gold really stands out. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's much golder on the screen than it is in real life. But lucky for my viewers. <laughs> I think this might be a good Yeah, this church, of course, also has one of uh, Giotto's sort of predecessors, Cimabue, who was definitely the shoulders on which Giotto stood to execute his art. Okay. Right, onward. So this is a to the art tell you what the spaces are. So in here we have two space. Detail. I love the way ancient Roman armor. It's very colorful. It's much more interesting. Ancient Roman armor. But this is better. <laughs> this is <laughs> oh. oh shit. Oh, this Broken post and cut. You might want to stay a bit better. You. when art of a filmmaker imagine the Middle Ages. They always depict it through this dark blue gray lens and mud and dirt and everyone's in gray and brown and black. The Middle Ages was colorful, it was filled with color and it wasn't a dark depressing time as the Victorians had to believe. It was a celebration of thought and art. Um, so yeah, so this amazing space is the state. I'm not certain to use it as a sacristy. I don't know the sacristy is the place where priests prepare for mass. They go through the dressing ritual. And Used as a chapel, and where the vestments were. I mean, to open it up, it's probably probably where the vestments were stored. I'm assuming. Yes, excellent. Welcome, dear viewers. Here we are in the sacristy of Santa Croce, just admiring the works by Cimabue. Frescoes by Giovanni de Milano, 
to nothing. <laughs> Now these last supper scenes can be a really good good way thought of a dinner table say or a table. And one thing you're going to notice lacking also you'll notice there are no quote unquote eating pricks, because those prickers that come with the kits knives, they were not meant at all. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I actually wanted to come over to the of um, Terra. So this is a half of um, So lots of by the starting sort of in the 15th it was a medium of choice. Welcome back. Sorry, these medieval buildings are really good at foiling cellular connections. Rossini. Apparently Rossini is buried. Apologize, these medieval buildings with cellular <laughs> connections. There's area, of course, Santa Croce used to be outside of the city, as most monast monastic communities were. Um, it's now, of course, inside the city, definitely. So it's nice to have this peaceful little haven. So, in front of us, this amazing neoclassical looking architecture. Hold on a minute. The rivals of they positioned themselves to take over the Medici's the de facto princes. And as you know, um, in the 1470s, they attempted to execute a maybe not backlit. <laughs> sure. Hmm? Are we live? Are we live or not? Are we live or not? Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So, the Palazzi tried to effect a coup on the Medici in the 1470s, and they attacked Lorenzo and his brother Giuliano <laughs> during Mass in the cathedral in Santa Maria del Fiore. Giuliano did not make it. Lorenzo managed to flee with the help of some of his own partisans into the sacristy and managed to withstand the attack. And this spelled the end of the Pazzi, uh, made famous in uh, the novel, uh, what is it, Thomas Harris's uh, Hannibal, I think it was? Yeah. Anyway, before that, they were a really powerful family and they had this um, chapel here, crypt and chapel here in Santa Croce. And so, the terracotta art form. Just gorgeous. The blues, the greens, the yellows really withstand the test of time. It's subtle. It's understated. That's what happens when you're trying to become the new princes of Florence. Oh, yeah. Um, and in fact, this chapel was designed by Brunelleschi, the same man who built the first dome to be built since ancient Rome. And so you can see the difference here between Giotto and Cimabue's paintings in the sanctuary. This is entirely new. This is very 15th century. This is very Quattrocento. 
very neoclassical. Definitely harkening back to the grandeur of the Caesars of Rome. The Pazzi definitely had grand ideas. It was the execution that was piss poor. I guess literally since they ended up hanging from the Campanile of the Signoria. Yeah. Still a stunning space. Yeah. Yeah, the thing I wanted to show them there is closed anyway. First, the second set of cloisters. This one, much more intentionally designed in a perfect square, whereas the other one just sort of filled the space that was available. So just look at this beautiful space and tell me that you couldn't find a moment of peace here. I'm not even going to talk about the sacrilege of playing Assassin's Creed through this particular cloister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I should say that if you are okay, hence why people who just sit here and relax because it's really a park. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason that Florence is such a tourist destination and it's because it deserves to be. Cliche it may be with good reason, especially for art historians and artists. Real artists, not the crappy ones who defecate in a bucket and call it art. Judgy Contessa. So if you look up here, you can actually see the Campanile, the bell tower of the church, of the sanctuary. And you'll notice that it's, it's sort of rough stone. Uh, the, basically, they, there have been spots left to actually fix the cladding um, and that's because in many cases this is how they were meant to be they weren't designed to be clad or they ran to do the so the del Fiore and the facade of Santa Croce and Florence was in the process of becoming the capital of the recent kingdom of they got it own offensive of the glory commissioned architect and art design this Ooh, looks like an old storage room that needs needs some help. You get cloister. <laughs>
you look up, you can see some remnants of the medieval wall paintings that used to adorn the whole space. Again, the horror of the empty. This didn't used to all be white. Sort of a counter-reformation thing. Nonsense. So from this corner, you can actually see the new Gothic. Hmm. Say something about the choppy video because of the internet. Oh, I uh, apologize for the choppiness of this video, everyone. These medieval buildings, as I've said before, and we'll say again, really play havoc with the cellular connection. Do we have connection now? Mm -hmm. Right, so here you can see the contrast between the medieval facade <laughs> exterior and the neo-gothic there on the corner. That neo-gothic thing was literally glued on <laughs> practically in the second half of the 19th century. And it's sort of uber-gothic, as I call it. That's what neo-gothic is all about. Anyway, um, that has been your walking tour of Santa Croce. Uh, are any questions before we part ways? It's a warm day here in Florence. We are going to go and attempt to not be too warm because the sun is kind of at its apex right now. Otherwise, um, tomorrow we'll bring you some other live thing from some other Florentine site. And tomorrow I should be garbing up a la Contessa. So tomorrow we'll be in full finery. So stay tuned for whatever we decide to do tomorrow. <laughs> God knows. Maybe the Palazzo Davanzati actually in, in attire. Do we have no connection? Oh, okay. Why are you shaking your head? I finally got to read Tommaso's. Uh, oh, <laughs> why? What did he say? Oh, of course he did. Yeah. Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. Ugh. Okay. Uh, were there any other comments or questions I should respond to? Great vid, Claus and all. Thanks for. I'm assuming there was more in the excellent test. <laughs> okay, everyone. Hopefully, see you tomorrow. Ciao. I don't know. <laughs> Press some buttons until something happens. Uh, X. 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 X.